Welcome ladies and gentlemen, Furu here bringing you another Gwent video. Over the weekend was the first Gwent premium event ever, which was the Gwent Challenger, a 100,000 US dollar event where the winner of the event took down 60,000 K. So the winner was Life Coach, and I want to show you a deck today that he was playing at the event, which is the Monsters deck, the Dagon Monsters deck from Life Coach. And he said it earlier at the event in an interview, all his decks at the tournament were targeting handled decks, so the Northern Realms deck. So keep that in mind, it is a tournament deck and not directly one-to-one -one comparable on the ladder. So if you play that on ladder, you might want to change a card here and there. If you, uh, have, if you have some difficulties, you might want to change it a bit. Nonetheless, the deck is good in its current state as well. And let's just check it out here. Okay, so let's have a look at the deck. As you can see here, uh, more or less the build is kind of standard for a monsters consume deck if you check out the bronze cards here You have the Neka, you have the ghouls, you have the van warriors, you have Ekimara all in triple So just for the consume part, you're not running any Neka warriors, so just the simple Nekas Then you have of course the Arachas Behemoth, which is just spawning another Arachas Whenever you will consume another unit, so that might might make a huge huge board Arachas are three strength point units and of course, uh, you could also play all Arachas from your deck, but in the deck there is not a single Arachas, so you are just trying to consume units and then spawning more and more Arachas on the board. With the operator here that you're running, you will also choose a non unit in your hand other than the operator, and you will create an exact copy of that in both players' hands. And for that, you are targeting your key cards, so for example, the Van Warrior or the Arachas Behemoth, because your opponent has normally no chance if he's not also playing monsters he has no chance to um, really take benefit from the effects of the consume monsters so the van warrior for example you are the monster you are trying to get the passive activated so keeping a huge unit on the board for the next round your opponent cannot do that so even if he's consuming units he's not getting the huge unit on on the next round so that is just helping yourself operator is really strong in the consume deck if you are not facing another consume monster deck if you're facing another consume monster deck you might need to change strategy and maybe uh took down another card but normally you will also help your opponent kind of because he is definitely interested in getting some consume cards as well now uh, you're also running the alzo's double cross which is add three strengths to the strongest non god unit in your deck and play it ties are resolved randomly so when you look here at the strongest non-gold units, you are seeing the operator and you will see the crone. And so one of those is spawning on the battlefield and getting three extra points. But even in case that you're not getting either the um, operator here or the crone brewers out of your deck, if you already played those, then you will of course just pick up one of the six point units here. So it doesn't matter because even if you drop the Arahas Behemoth on the board, if you drop Ran Warrior or the Ikimawa, they are all giving you extra value. So the Aldous Double Cross is a really strong card in the deck. You are not unhappy to see any card spawning out of that. So keep that in mind. Normally you are trying to get the Chrome Brevis or Operator, but even the other six points card that will then spawn when you already got the other eight points on the board are still very strong in your deck. If you, if you look at the gold cards here, you will see the Caretaker, you see Chiron and you see the Avalach. These are all more or less standard in a Monsters Consume deck, so normally everyone is playing those. But the fourth gold card here is interesting, that's the Drog, which is removing one strength from a random opposing non god unit seven times. That's an interesting choice and normally what we are seeing in most Monsters Consume deck is a different gold card and that will be the Gavel Igni here. So if you don't like the Drog, I would um, recommend here to use Gerald Igni instead, which is uh, destroy the strongest non god unit on the opposing row. If that row totals, it's 20 or more strength. That's another strong card you can play. And I guess uh, he was using the Drog here in this situation because of the tournament environment. So I would personally uh, take the Gerald Igni over that. But Drog is also a fine card for sure. So that's more or less the deck. Uh, we will now play it a bit on the ladder and see if it is also working on the ladder and not only in tournaments. It should be because the deck is more or less standard. So a lot of the cards, you have no chance to drop anything else in that because the cards are just too good. You want to play three Van Warriors, you want to play three Arahas Behemoth. So these cards 
are stable, you want to play them. So I would assume that the deck is also very working very good on the ladder, but we will find out now. Let's play some decks for that. And I will probably do some of the other decks from Life Coach that he was using at the Challengers event over the next couple of days. So keep an eye on my channel, subscribe to the channel and get notified when I'll upload the next videos for Gwent. So let's now head onto the ladder. I'm still rank 15, of course. I'm not dropping to rank 14. That is not possible in Gwent. Keep that in mind. So rank 15 with, I guess, 4,300 MMR currently. Not totally sure, but around that it should be. Let's just play a bit on the ladder now. Let's go. All right, guys, so we are starting here our journey today against the full test Northern Realms deck. And that'll be tough, but nonetheless, definitely beatable. So we have a Nika, Ghoul, our husband with double Van Varia, triple Van Varia even, Roach Operator and Kataka alongside the Avalach. We don't need the Roach, of course. Let's just see what else we are not interested in keeping. Yeah, I would say we can drop one Van Varia and we get the Kaiwan, which is good. Let's drop the Roach. Getting another Avajas Behemoth, so I would say the starting hand looks really, really good. There is no need to drop something else, so we could, of course... Uh, yeah, let's drop a Ghoul as well. So yeah, that's one Crone, that's exactly what I wanted to see here. So we can just play the Crones. Our opponent is starting with a Reinforced Tibouche. If we go for the Operator here, our opponent is not getting any value out of that. If we, for example, get another Van Varia or another, another Avajas Behemoth. So let's start with that. We are copying the Van Varia. Got another one of those. The Tribuche is of course hitting the Operator. And he's looking forward to see more Tribuches on the board. And as I said earlier, the Varia is not giving him any sort of value. He can consume other units, but it's not like he has any units that so, are helping him with some uh, consuming. So not nothing like the Arhas Behemothi, for example. Just another Chibouche on the board. We are now dropping the... Uh, let's start with the Behemoth. Then the Warrior and then the Nika. And with stuff like the Crone and the Nika, we're just thinning our deck to get to the right card that we want to see. Definitely looking uh -oh. forward to win the first well, round here and then uh, play the Avalach, for example, in the second one. He's going for the Kadvini Siege support, which is buffing 3 to 2 units, so that's good for him. Drop the warrior. If he's killing that, we can just drop another one, no problem. Only problem would be if he's hitting the behemoth too much. So that's Chixra. He's looking at all the no gold cards in his deck and he's playing one and the others will be placed at random into his deck. He's going for the bloody baron, spawning the botchling, which is with silence. So he is staying at the battlefield for the next round. No, that of a problem. And we will just drop the Nicker here. Plan is just what we wanted. So we are spawning another Nicker, we are spawning Rachas. Getting a lot of points on the board. Plus the Nickers, of course, always getting buffed here whenever we are consuming. I'm also going for the Warrior. Interesting. So, how about let's just drop the Crones? I so we're dropping the other crones out of our deck, which means we're now ahead. Two points, he's dealing two points with the supports. And that means we are 45 to 45. Going for Priscilla, he's now seeing two cards. One is face down and he's deciding what to play here. Going for King of Beggars, which should give him either Reaver Scout or Field Medic. He's getting another Reaver Scout, so another Siege support. That is a lot of points just from the Priscilla. And that's why he's now going ahead by uh, 16 points. Buffing the botchling, so that will be 8 points that is staying on the board for the next round. And let's see if we just go for the Chiron. That would be a lot of points. Could also just drop another warrior here. And consuming more stuff to get a bigger unit on the board for the next round. Nakers are going down. We are spawning the last Naker out of the deck. Another two from the Tibushis. So, let's see. Currently four points behind. Thank not me. Thank and he's just playing Priscilla not again. And it looks like he is looking for another Priscilla. So if he's consuming again, he could get Priscilla again on the board. Cleaver. That is locking um, the Fran Warrior. 
not that of a problem because we still have one more. So that's a possibility. Otherwise we are just keeping the six points here. I'm not totally a fan of that. So I guess we are just dropping another one. Yep, that's good. Currently 10 points behind, which is totally fine at this point. We still have the option to just drop the weather here. And if we drop the weather, then everything in the back is just getting down to one point. Just buffing the botchling again. And how about we are now just stealing Priscilla? Out of his graveyard, so Priscilla is coming. Let's show him what we, we are getting Vikimara, which is then eating. Let's see, we are going to eat this little guy, or shall we eat the 8 points? 8 points is even more, right? That's better. Yeah, especially if we go for the weather, we're eating the 8 points. Not eating the Vound Warrior, there is still a chance that we want to get another unit there. I mean, probably not, but nonetheless, let's go for the 8 points. So there's a consume, we now have 20 for the next round. We are going ahead here by 2 points. And now we even because of the reinforcements. But nonetheless. Uh, it looks like he's just getting going for the reverse scout. Yeah, that's another eight points. And that another loose stripe scout. Which is just again buffing the botchling here. Currently ahead, but what we are doing is just playing our Dagon using some weather. That will be rain. Getting rid of a lot of points here on the board. And with that, we are going ahead here. By three points. Plus, we are, of course, keeping right now the 19 points, but that is going up to 24 points. And the longer the round is going, the more it will get. And we can still play the Chiron, for example. If he's investing more cards, that is more or less just helping us. If he's not able to clear the warrior. Time is running out, so he needs to decide kind of fast. That was a decoy. So he's going for the Reaver Scout. I told you so, playing it idiot. again. And he's going for the Reinforced Super Share, which is also down to one point. It's just that he can deal more damage here. So it is two to three cards. We are just going for the Kaiwan. We will then... Uh, let's see. We will consume... These little guys. We will spawn more Arachas here. So going ahead. Plus we are buffing the Nakers of course. So push us ahead here by uh, 19 points. We're getting another 3 from the reinforced super chase. Plus we have 24 for the next round. Which is a lot. So I'm not sure if he's really interested in investing more cards. Probably he's not. No, he's not. So he's passing. We are also just passing, of course. Keeping a lot of points for the next round. Plus we still have the smaller advantage that we can just play, for example, the Avalach here. Ikimara and a Ghoul. So yeah, we are just, oh, just playing the Avalach. That is pushing in my head, but he needs to still needs to play another card. He's getting the roach on the board. It's time. There you go. So it's 29 to 24. We have Ikimara. We have the Aldo's double cross. What was that? Yeah, promote. Okay, that's fine. So that's 33 to 24 points. What we are doing is uh, just going for the Google here, consuming a unit, which was three points, so probably the siege support. What do you want? To probably what do you as a field want? medic, getting the siege board on the board, so you can just buff a field medic because the other units are now golden, no chance for him. We're dropping the Kimara, eating the Google, so that is 13 points on the Kimara. And if we use the second Ikimara here, we can just um, get the Vine Warrior for the next round. Oh, I'm a medic. I can't but of course, there was Chani. That means we're just passing now. He's way ahead in points. But we have one card advantage for the next round. Plus, we are keeping the unit here, which will be a huge Vine Warrior. 
So not a problem. Let's just pass. So that is 37 points for the last round. Plus we have Arahas Bemus, plus we have Akimara. So he's just for feeding here. There's not a chance that he's coming back from that if he's not able to kill the Van Voya. And let's see how many points that is giving us. So we are getting 44 points. Yeah, and we were now at over 4.3k MMR. Let's go for the top. So let's play another game. Okay, so game two will be against Francesca's Goya Teal. That will be interesting. Normally you're seeing uh, more Bruva hooks, so Francesca has an interesting choice. We have uh, for the starting hand Neka, double ghouls, Arachas Behemoth, one Van Varia, double Akimara, one Krone, and Kaiwan plus a Drog. So I guess we are looking forward to kill one, probably the ghouls here. Ghouls are not that strong earlier on because you are not, if there is no unit in the graveyard, you can of course not banish anything. So it's better to play those later in the game. Let's see, we get Caretaker, yeah, that's, that's great. Also, you're also playing the Caretaker normally on the second or third round of the last school as well. We get Aldo's double cross, which means we would get the Operator, because right now it looks like we are starting them with the Crones, then play the Aldo's double cross, which is giving us the Operator on the ball. And then we can, for example, just play another Ahas Behemoth or another Van Varia. See about that. Uh, the rest looks fine, so I guess we are just starting with that. Yeah, time is also running out, so let's just do that. Let's accept here. Poland is deciding, let the coin decide who's going first and fortunately for him he needs to start the game which is always a little disadvantage. He's starting here with the Vryhead Dragoons so he can add 4 strength to a non gold unit in his hand. That might be dangerous, we will find out if he's playing some ambush cards here or not. Uh, for now let's just start with the Crone. Getting the other Crones on the board so that's 20 points right from the start. And that was uh, that was the Venom, yeah, Manticore Venom, which is that he's choosing three adjacent units and he's moving four strength from the non units among them. That's why he was moving 12 points, which is of course a lot from a small Bronx unit. Bronx card, not a unit. And um, then we will now go for the Alders double cross, getting the operator on the board, spawning for 11 points. And I really like to I mean, yeah, we have another Behemoth. Uh, still going for the Vandra. I like that. like that a bit more. So our opponent now has also a Vandra in his hand, which is not really helping him. Just like the last game, so it's not like he's getting that much value. As a rally effect, going for the Dol Bluffan Archer, removing sweet strength from an opposing non gold unit. And he's hitting. He's only hitting the Crone. That's only two points, man. Uh, could have been something else for you to play. Anyway, let's just drop our Haspemoth here. Then we are dropping the Warrior and the Nika, just like the last game. Uh, okay, so with the Cleaver, he's just locking in the Arahas Behemoth. So we're not spawning, spawning any Arahas, unfortunately. But nonetheless, we are good ahead here at the moment. Everything 13 works. points. There's the Elf Mercenary, he's also playing the Double Cross. Getting the Supreme Willy, which is moving three strengths from an opposing non gold unit. Let's see what he's picking. Uh, are you again only picking the two points here? Yeah, you know, finally he's picking the three. That's more value for him. Let's drop the Nika here. So again, Van Varia is eating the Nika. We're spawning the second Nika out of the deck, so that's four point now. And still three coming. points ahead. There's the another elf mercenary. He's picking up the Sweller Potion. He's adding eight strengths to a non-gold unit, which is apparently the Vryhead Dragoon. So that makes him currently uh, nine points ahead. But of course we have one card uh, more to play. So it's not like he's getting super much value here. Uh, we might just might just be interested in getting a huge round warrior for the next round. If we play the draw, we will we will get rid of seven points on his side. Plus we're getting seven. Plus we are spawning the roach, which might be very useful right now. But so just thinning out the deck a bit. Yeah, let's do that. The so roach is spawning in the melee row. Plus seven points reduced on opponent's side, which means we are currently eight points ahead. And there is an ambush card, and you can kinda be sure that the Vryhead Dragoon was buffing this one. 
And that is probably then the Tower Wheel. Could of course be something else, but looking like Tower Wheel. Tower Wheel is 6 points, plus he's buffing uh, the adjacent units here. The two adjacent units. That will be another 4, then that's 10 points in total. Which means he's currently 2 points ahead. And of course it can be even more. Uh, just going... Are we going for the Akimara here? Yeah, okay. So that is 18 points that we are right now... Uh, 17 points, sorry. 17 points that we are right now getting into the next round. Which is pushing us ahead by 21 points. Oh, another ambush card. Alright, so that is interesting. If we're just passing, he's getting 10 points here. He's still behind. We could also just play or spawn some weather here, that's a possibility. Uh, he has one warrior in his hand, which is not really helping him to push a lot of points. And two unknown cards, plus still the hero power. We, are one, we have one card advantage. And really like to just pass now, to be honest. Uh, Katek is not giving us anything right now, there's nothing in his graveyard. So let's just pass. Activating the tower wheel here. Oh, that's a tower wheel. So, the last card is not activated. We are five points ahead, so he needs to play another card. Of the mercenary, he's spawning. Alright, so that was the Shiro. Which is pushing him ahead, but he also... He is losing in card advantage heavily. He only has three cards, one of the warrior, which is not helping him too much. Plus, we are keeping, of course, a unit on the board, which is the 14 points from the Van Varia. So he is two cards behind and he has less points on the board right now. So that was kind of very, very, very expensive for our opponent to just win the first round. He is letting us starting here. Uh, we have some... Some option for that. We have double Van Varia, we have the Ikimara. I like to just start with the Ghoul here. We're consuming one unit in our graveyard, which was probably a Neka. There it was. Going for Fantheska. Then it's our turn again. He's still two cards behind. Uh, we might just play the Ikimara. Eating the Ghoul here for the seven points. So that's 13 on the board. The Van Varia is eating the Ekimara, so that's 27 points for the next round. If he's not somehow killing that, there's just another uh, first light. So he's getting another unit here, which is the Van Varia that he was just replacing with the Francesca. So he's getting that back on the board, not really helping him. So it is 27 to 6. We of course still forced to play more stuff on the board. And uh, we could do so with the Caretaker. If we're just stopping a Van Varia, that might not be too useful. We could play the Caretaker here. And getting a unit on the board. So, for example, for example, we get a roach here. We could get Superior and Villy. That would be seven points. We could just play the Archer. A lot of decent stuff. We could also just play the Dragoon. That would be nine. Cleaver. A lot of interesting cards to take. Yeah, I guess we we'll go for the Caretaker then. So, the most points will be this one here. That's 10. Let's just pick it. And uh, let's just hit this one. Put three down. It's 3 to 43. No chance to win this one. Dragoon buffing another card in his hand. There's only one card he can buff. And I don't think we need to play more stuff, but might still be. Let's drop one Fran Vary. Huh? Let's see what he's doing. So we are keeping 33 points for the next round. Are you seriously continuing here? He's not, he's just passing. We are of course also just passing. The last round, here we go. With a huge, huge advantage of course. That will be tough. There is Arahas Behemoth, very good in the situation. So what we can do is just drop the Arahas Behemoth here. We have the Chiron, so we are definitely, definitely spawning stuff on the board. Going for the Iglis, uh, getting a special card here. I'll just double cross. Oh, Mark on Defender. That's only 8 points. Not really good. So if we just drop the Vran Warrior. Uh, we could also just play First Light and get another unit. Let's see how many Ekimaras we have played so far. Two, 
Two to two. We still have ghouls in the deck. Uh, there's, a, there's a decent chance to get a ghoul here. Let's go for that. Might even get another Haspemoth. First light. Rally effect, of course. And that is uh, just another Haspemoth. Okay, that's good. So if we go for the Chiron, we're saving the points here. There's a Bran. He's always oh, hitting the Van Warrior. Interesting. So what we're doing is just dropping the Van Warrior here into the lane. And then we're playing Chiron. There's Askia. Yeah, he's down. He is just down here. He's not even ahead now. We are just playing the Chiron. Eating the Van Warrior. We are spawning all the little Rajas here and winning heavily. Heavily. That was devastating. And that's another victory with the deck. So apparently it is working really, really good on the ladder as well. Roach going down. And it is 34 to 74, winning the last round as well. And with that, we are at the end of today's episode. Let's just check out how many points we were getting here. So the rank, we're getting another 45 points. So nearly at 4,400 MMR. Slowly getting there. I haven't, I haven't played that much, to be honest. But there will be some news for the open beta, for the date of the open beta this week. So stay tuned. Check out the Grand Twitter or the Twitch channel. I'm not sure where they're announcing that shit. But news about the open beta is coming. And you can expect that the open beta is probably starting at the end of May. Because the season, the ranked season, should end at the end of May as well. So that might be coincidence. And expect to see the date of the open beta this week. Guys, thank you for watching this video. And I will then see you in the next one. I will probably do some more stuff for the Grand Challenger decks over the next couple of days. So keep an eye out on the channel. Uh, if you have liked the video, just give it a little thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. I will see you then, guys. Have a good night. Bye-bye.